You know, my wife wanted so much to be here. And uh, we've been through a tough 10 days. I'd gone to Australia and come back and finish some meetings, and she had gone to represent me for some board meetings in Singapore and India. First time we were back together after three weeks, it was a week ago Sunday, and Margie and I were packing some boxes, preparing to move. And she got up on a small step ladder, and I was in a room, other room, putting some of my books in or whatever, when I suddenly heard this crash and a scream. And she came crashing back, and when I walked in, it's a sight I'll never forget. She was just staring glassy-eyed into the ceiling, and her arm was just completely limp. And I just burst into tears and bent down, couldn't move her body. She said, please don't, don't touch this arm, something's happened. And I called the paramedics and all of them and took them about 30 minutes, first giving some morphine to kill the pain, and then 30, 40 minutes to get her onto a stretcher. It was a complete clean fracture of the humerus, upper right humerus. You know what happens when your bone's broken? I had a broken back at one time. You can will all you want to will, and you cannot move that extremity. You can want to make all the decisions you desire, and she couldn't move that arm and still is in trouble with it, probably for some weeks, if not some months to come. Is that not an indication of what happens when the soul has ruptured and broken and fallen away from God? You can will all you want to will. You cannot rescue yourself. You cannot redeem yourself. So the story of creation is linked directly into the story of redemption, and both of them take a miraculous intervention. Both of them. So those who deny the miracle of the resurrection are forced to deny the miracle of the new birth. Remember a long time ago, not a long time, a couple of years ago, maybe even less than that, a book was written that ought never to have been written, which was called Love Wins. And one of the statements, I don't like to criticize people's writing, but I remember when I came to this line in there, I put it down and I said, my word, when he made the comment that nowhere in the New Testament, there's a talk about receiving Jesus Christ into your life as your Savior. You know what, folks? I came to know Jesus Christ when I was 17 years old on a bed of suicide. All the willing I'd done for 17 years had just ended up me in a complete and ended me up in a complete mess. And I'm an apologist. We argue from here and find the bridge to here, from the head to the heart. We do it all the time. But I'll tell you what, no matter what arguments are presented to me at the end of the day, I know in whom I believed. I know who's redeemed me. I know the divine encounter and what happened to me in that hospital room. I know the transformation that took place, the new hungers, the new loves, the new desires, the new passions. All of these came by divine intervention. It was a miraculous intervention of God himself into my life just as he's intervened in yours. And until we understand that it really takes a supreme intervention of God himself to overcome the dastardliness of evil, the inclinations of the heart, until we understand that, we can just sort of stop short with one idea of the miraculous, either in the creation or in the resurrection. We will lose sight of one of the greatest down payments of the ultimate resurrection, which happens right now as God brings new birth within you and brings that dead soul to life, as it were, bringing the new life into you.